This is Joe with Joe's Astrophoto.com and it's springtime in the Rockies, snow covered mountains and green grass. And despite this crazy wind we got going on today, I'm still going to capture the Owl Nebula and the Surfboard Galaxy tonight. So the plan tonight is to take a shot of the Owl Nebula and the Surfboard Galaxy in the same frame. I got this idea from Chuck's Astrophotography YouTube channel and I let him know that I was going to basically be just completely ripping off his video. No, really. Um, I wanted to give a special shout out to Chuck though for um, giving me this great idea to, to take this. Um, someday, um, I don't know when, but someday I'm going to have an Edge HD8 just right here. And until then, I guess I'm going to still have to make do with my effective 447 uh, millimeter focal length. And in order to do galaxy season, you need a lot more than that. But this is going to be a fantastic opportunity because I'm going to be using my 294 in bin 1 mode to capture these in the, the same frame. There's going to be a lot of cropping. And so it's a great test to see um, what 43 megapixels can do when you really crop in. So I'm looking forward to testing that out. Uh, the Owl Nebula is around 2,000 light years away from the Earth, while the Surfboard Galaxy is like 45 million light years away. So it's crazy, but in Chuck's um, picture it looked like they were side by side and so I'm looking forward to seeing that and not only that but in a lot of social media I've seen um, these two popping up all over the place since I saw his video so I'm looking forward to uh, get mine out there too um, being that it's galaxy season and the surfboard galaxy is a galaxy it's actually M108 there's a lot of other little galaxies in, in there too. I don't know if I'm going to pick those up with this shorter focal length, but we'll see. I'm looking forward to trying it out and I want to bring you along with me. Okay, so it's still pretty early in the day, but I'm excited about getting this. So I'm going to go ahead and um, set up Nina now, at least for the framing and the sequence. And I just wanted to show you guys, um, I've still got like, six hours seven hours left though before i'm actually gonna um, start imaging but i figure why not show you now um, and get all this situated so i think what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna look for m108 and then see how that framing looks And I, what we'll do is we'll just move this box a little right here and recenter the image. Okay, it's loaded in. Um, I'm going to replace his sequence target. I'm still using the, the normal default uh, build of Nina. I've been wanting to go to the... Um, I've been wanting to go to the other build, the nightly build, so that I can get some of the advanced sequencing options, but I've been seeing where the latest build has had a lot of issues, and I really, I already have enough issues as it is with astrophotography, I don't want to add more to it, but I am looking forward to moving on to uh, Nina 1.11 from 1.10. Anyway, that being said, um, I'm going to turn on start guiding, slew to target, center target, and I'm also going to um, focus on start and on filter change. What I'd like to do is um, I'm going to be imaging for 90 second subs at um, a, the unity gain of 120 and an offset of 24. And we're going to start with luminance. We're going to turn dithering on, and I'm, I'm going to try and get about 110 images of 
And so, because I'm going to do so many, I'm going to only dither every um, five. What I normally do is I dither every 20 frames that I take, I'll dither. And so, um, once I hit 100, that's about five. If I was to go up to 120, I might go to six, but the exception is I don't normally dither less than five, but then again, I don't normally have enough time to take more than 100 or 110 uh, images of the of the same filter, so I, I don't really run into that issue. I'm going to change this to 50, and then we'll go with red. I'm going to change this down to 2, and it looks like it's uh, four hours already so let me add the green and the blue and that's about seven seven hours 40 minutes to do this um, and then if there's gonna be as you can see here there's gonna be a meridian flip about halfway through that I have to take into account and also the focusing on each filter so another couple minutes so I want to say there's about 20 minutes that I have to add onto this which will bring it right up to eight hours and I should be able to start imaging at 8 30 and so that'll bring me to 4 30 in the morning so that's just about perfect I think I can get away with this right here um, and still get every one of my uh, blues um, and what I'm actually gonna do is because the moon comes up later in the evening in the night or I should say early tomorrow morning at this point I'm gonna change my blue and my red because red seems to do a little bit better this is far away from the moon and the moon's not that bright but still I think I'll get a little bit better exposures from my blue if um, I'm taking them when the before the moon comes up so that's it uh, I just have to wait until about 8.30 my time and, and push play. Everything else is ready to go. I'm almost ready to get started uh, I get to start imaging as soon as it gets dark and image all the way until the Sun comes up in the morning um, the Al Nebula and the surfboard galaxy lie um, in Ursa Major which is close to Polaris and it never really drops below the 20 degree mark where uh, I have to where the observatory wall hits so all I really got to do is just get ready and wait for the sun to go down completely. And hope the wind stops. It's supposed to have stopped an hour ago. We'll see. Okay, here's my first image. I like the way that um, I've got plenty of room to crop around here, so that's pretty good. And of course, uh, Elon Musk decided to photobomb me again. I'm getting a little bit of uh, star shine from a star off in the distance here, but that's okay. I don't care because I'm going to be cropping this in a little bit, so that should be fine. Um, yeah, overall I like it. Um, i just zoom in a little bit. This is pretty good for uh, one, a single sub. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing so far. Alright, this is my first luminance. I will check back in a while on it and uh, hopefully have something to show you guys tomorrow.
So despite the crazy wind that we've had here the last couple nights, um, the imaging session went fantastic. I got um, probably 200 uh, 90 second exposures and a hundred of those at least being luminance. Um, I think I might have even gotten like 250 or something. Uh, I got to go check everything out. Um, when I looked, it, everything looked good. The the wind didn't wasn't quite strong enough to affect anything inside the observatory, so that's great. Um, I got really good HFR. Uh, my tracking was a you know 0 0.6, 0 0.7 total. RMS error. So I was really pleased with the way it came out and I hope you are too. Stick around and I'll show you the final image. So I want to cut in real quick. I know I normally show my image at the end of the video with some music and the details of the image, but I, I needed to show you guys this. The ZWASI 294 just continues to impress me beyond belief. I was using it in bin one mode with 43 megapixels and I just need to show you, this is so cool. So this is the, the stacked image that we got from last night's luminance. And you can see the, the tremendous wide field uh, produced by my setup. Now here is the image after I processed it with, through LRGB. I didn't quite get as much of the orange um, as I've seen from others in the Al Nebula, but Still, that's not really what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about is just the detail that this thing still has. So I went ahead and cropped it down more for my final image and I was gonna present this as the final image. And I can still zoom in even more. And the coolest thing is, is that I caught another galaxy. Um, I caught the, uh, I believe this is, um, UGC 6211 Spiral Galaxy. And I even got some detail in it as I continue to zoom in. And this is I, this, the power of, of the 294 uh, in bin one mode. I have 43 megapixels of resolution and it, it's just amazing to me. I mean, here's another little galaxy up here too. Um, and I just can't believe that I was able to capture that galaxy. I wasn't even going for it. And, um, this galaxy is 900 million light years away. So I don't know if that's a, that is a testament to how spectacular this camera is. I mean, there's tons of little galaxies all over. I know in Chuck's video, he pointed a bunch of these out, but, um, I didn't see this galaxy in his video and it hit me when I saw that and I, it's just amazing. I mean, if there's some more, there's so many little galaxies in this photograph. But that was it. I needed to show you guys that. Now we'll carry on with the music and the final image.